My name is Bri Sargent. I have been a workplace safety professional for nearly 20 years, and I've trained over 100 safety managers, and I absolutely love what we do. I um, am extremely passionate about talking about management commitment, the psychology of safety, and building safety cultures. So let's get started. We are talking today about the basics of an employee committee. And to start off, I'm trying to change my wording. I like the term employee committee as opposed to safety committee. So I like the term employee committee because it actually benefits you a couple of ways. One is it tells you that the committee is for and driven by employees, as it should be. And two, when you take safety out of it and just make it an employee committee, it invites all the different departments in as well. So that way you you know that what you're talking about is how you're going to improve all of operations, not just one tiny aspect of it. Now, why would you even have a safety committee, employee committee, is because uh, some regulations require it, right? So you might be forced to do it. But more importantly, when you have an employee committee, it increases engagement. And when you have an engaged workforce, want people that are actually involved in the work and involved in this decision-making process and all of that stuff, they end up following the safe rules more often. And then you have a better workplace, too. There's a better team environment. Um, and just everything goes better when you employ involve employees, which I'm pretty sure we talked about before. All right, so some basics. And this is these are things that I kind of see missing when I do audits and I'm looking at safety committees. The basics, what you want to start off with is a mission statement or a committee charter. I kind of like the idea of a charter with a mission statement as part of it. That's how I built mine. And what this is, is it actually tells what we are doing in the committee. What is the purpose of the committee? What is the why, right? So that way, when you're developing your committee and you're deciding who your members are and when you're going to meet and what you're going to do and what's going to be on your agenda, you have a document that is your driving purpose. But more importantly, when you go to get approval for that committee, because even if it's a requirement, you still have to take it to the management team and you need their buy-in, right? When you go to them and say, hey, I need to do this safety committee or I need to do this, um, you know, have an employee committee meeting, they can see from the charter, this is how it's going to benefit the company. This is how it's going to benefit my department. This is what I'm going to get out of it. It's not just an interruption because it's very easy for committees to turn into complaint sessions and that's not beneficial to anybody. So you always have this one document that you can go back to and go, hey, this is the purpose and this is why we're here. So having a mission statement or a committee charter is extremely important. Step two, you want to have membership of your employee committee. Who is going to be represented? All right. So the best way to do this is to make sure that you get at least one member from every area within your workplace. And I don't mean department because departments generally have multiple different job titles that are doing different things. So you can look at a department and you can usually be broken down into different areas. So you want at least one employee representative from every area, okay? And ideally, you want to have more employees than you do management. I've actually seen some employee committees that were 90% management. And that's not really an employee committee. That's a manager's meeting. And don't forget your office staff. A lot of times we disregard the office staff because it's not a safety sensitive position, but honestly, they come to the table with so much that can help an employee committee. They have fresh eyes because they're looking at things brand new and they don't understand why you're doing things the way you are. And also they come to the table with possibly computer skills, photo skills, um, PowerPoint skills, things that you can use to help market whatever project your employee committee is working on. Right. Facilities or maintenance is also good to have on your committee because a lot of the stuff being brought up is going to fall into their wheelhouse. Next, you want to have a regular schedule. What I like to do about the schedule is I like to have it on the same day of the month, every single month. And I like to do my committee meetings on a monthly basis. I've seen them done weekly and I've seen them done biweekly. And usually those are at facilities where they need a lot more help. Okay, so you can do it just once a month and that's fine. If you wanted to do it more than like less than once a month, like once every two months or once every three months, I do not recommend that at all. It's just too far away. You're not going to have as much of an impact. But once a month is a good medium in there. 
And once a week tends to be too much unless you're having some major problems, which is usually when I see people do that. Now, the problem with having it on a regular schedule, like let's say the third Thursday of every month, is that you as the safety manager, it's very easy for you to get pulled away. It's very easy for an accident to happen and you need to you know, jump ship and go investigate. Or it's very easy for you to get called into an executive's meeting or something like that. So you might want to think about having a co-chair. So that way, when you're not there, somebody else can still have the meeting without you. You do not have to be present to have an employee committee meeting. A lot of us think that we do, but really, if the employees are running it, it's it's a little bit better. Next, you want to have an agenda. So the agenda keeps you on track because committee meetings can tend to become complaint sessions. So if you have an agenda that you're following and everybody in the room knows what to expect and how you're going to follow the agenda step by step, it makes it a little bit easier for people to not go off on a tangent. All right. And to stay on track. And I like to start my agenda off with a mission statement every single meeting. So every month we're reading that mission statement. So that way we're reminded of the purpose of why we're even here to make sure that we are taking the steps to benefit the company and meet the agenda of that mission statement. So we do that as well as well, too. And the last thing is take action. This is most important. So important. Anything that the employees suggest within the room, you want to try to take action as much as possible. You can't be sitting there shooting down every idea that they have. Now, we're professionals. We've been doing this possibly for a couple of years or for, you know, in my case, 20 years, right? We've seen it all type of thing. And they'll come up with an idea and we'll say, nope, there's no way that's going to work. Yep, tried that five years ago. That didn't work. Nope, no way I'm going to get that approved. What you're going to do is you're going to stop employees from giving you suggestions. You're going to stop engagement. You're going to stop them from trying to participate. Try their idea anyway. Even if you think it won't work, you still try it, especially if it's a low cost idea. You do everything you can to try it. And when they see that you're actually trying it, you're going to get more and more participation. You're actually going to get people raising their hands saying, I want to be on committee. You know, they're eating lunch in there every day, which by the way, that's how I bribe my committee. <laughs> I would feed them lunch at the meeting, <laughs> but they're eating lunch every month and they're get they're, you know, they're actually making a difference. And when that happens, people actually want to be part of the committee. Another thing I like to do to show people that we're taking action is that I put it in the minutes. So it goes into the minutes of the meeting and then those minutes get posted in an employee common area so that everybody can see that we're actually taking action. Okay. So those are the basics. Have a mission statement. You know, make sure that your membership is more employees than it is management and that you're getting people from all areas of your business. Have a schedule that uh, that you stick to, a routine set time so that everybody knows when the meeting is going to be. Have an agenda and try to stick to it and then take minutes and take action on their suggestions. Just make sure that you get on my email list so that way you get notified. And the best way to get on the email list is to go to AskSafetyGeek.com forward slash five ways. There's a link in the description above as well. And then that will give you this cool document, which is five surprising ways to make employees crazy for safety. But then it will get you on that list. I will chat with you guys next week. And in the meantime, stay safe. Have a safe day. Bye.